فؤادك الايام فتا فصل ال ال الاحكام التي يدور الفقه عليها خمسه الشيخ رحمه الله تعالى هي از ناو ان وير ان ذا سكند شابتر او ذا سكند فصل which he's going to be speaking about الاحكام التي يدور الفقه عليها the ahkam which the fiqh revolves around al ahkam the rulings alati yaduru yaduru means what it revolves around fiqh are five now what does the word hukum mean so the word ahkam is plural jam'u taksir the singular is hukum what does hukum linguistically mean it means man prevention the word hukum it means prevention um, that's what it means and some say no it means qada to judge and both of them are the same no problem whichever you call it if you call it judge or if you call it prevention they both mean the same why would it mean judge how can it be both the same because if a person judges a matter it prevents another person to have a option in this for example if the law the judge judges that this person goes to prison it prevents this person from their freedom so there is a man in it prevention or there's also even prevention for anybody else to contribute anything to it so the word hukum means al-man'u aw al-qada that's what it means linguistically technically it means ma dalla alayhi khitab al-shar' al-mutaalliq bi af'al al-mukallafina mukallafina talaban aw takhiran aw wad'an but technically it means um, it is khitab al-shara, the addressing of the shara. When we say the shara, we mean the kitab and the sunnah. The kitab and the sunnah is addressing. What is it is, is addressing? Al, which is connected to, al-muta'alliq. Ta'alluq means what? Connected. It is connected to what? Bi af'al al-mukallafina. Mukallafina is what? Ma mi sha'nihi mutaklif. Those who are burdened. It is a person who is aqilun, muslimun aqilun baliq. A Muslim who is aqil, who's got sanity, huh? and he's baliq, he's reached the age of people, that person is a mukallaf. Uh, the third one is at-talab. Uh, so it's ma dalla alayhi khitabu al-shar' al-muta'alliq bi af'al al-mukallafina talaban. In a requesting manner. The way that the request comes is in two ways. Talabu fi'lin, which is amar, or wajib. Wa talabu tarkin, which is nahi, haram. Are you with me? Ala sabil al-ilzam, or sabil al-afdaliya. If it's, uh, if the talabu fi'l, is, if the talabu fi'l, if the sharia request for you to do an action, Ala sabil al-ilzam, in a forceful manner, what, what falls under it? Wajib. If the sharia requests for you to do something in a recommended manner, what is it? Mandu. So you have talabu fi'lin. Ala, look, so you have, pay attention. The talab is two types. The talab is two types. Talabu fi'lin, talabu tarq. The request to do something and the request to leave something. Talabu fi'lin is two types. The request to do something is of two types. In a forceful manner, in a recommended manner. What falls under the forceful manner? Wajib. Wajib. What falls under the recommended manner? Sunnah. Sunnah. Talabu tarq, now we're going to go to it. Which is that the sharia requests for you to do something. The sharia requests for you to? To stay away from something. Tarq. To stay away from something. So, tar, so the second one. Talabu tarq. How many things fall under that? Two. Ala wajhi al or ala wajhi al -ilzam. In a forceful manner or in a recommended manner? If the Sharia requests for you to leave something in a forceful manner, what is it? Haram. If it requests for you to leave of something in a recommended manner, makroo. makroo. So the Sharia requests for you to do something, and it tells you to stay away from something. If it requests from you, for, from you to do something, it is a recommended manner or a forceful manner. If it's in a recommended manner, for it, if, if it requests for you to do something in a recommended manner, it is sunnah. If it requests for you to do something in a forceful manner, it's wajib. Two you have over there. Now you've got two more to go. What is it? If the Sharia requests for you to leave something in a forceful manner, it's haram. 
if it requests for, from you to leave something in a recommended manner, it is makru. You have four there. Now what's left? The four, fifth one, which falls under what? It falls under, uh, uh, the Sheikh said, talaban or takhiran. Takhiran, what falls under it? Mandub. Sorry, and uh, mubah. Or takhiran is mubah. Mubah is, is well, uh, or wad'an. Or wad'a. Wad'a, we, wad'a is what? Wad'a, how many things fall under it? Five. Naam. Shart. Shart. Mani'a. Um, and others. We've mentioned them in the, uh, our book, uh, Aqeed, uh, in our book, Al-Waraqat. Naam. But we don't want to go into it right now. I don't want to touch on into it because the Sheikh didn't even bring Ahkam al wadiyah He only brought Ahkam al-Taklifiyah. الواجب الذي يثاب فاعله ويعاقب تاركه ويعاقب ويعاقب تاركه ويعاقب تاركه ويعاقب تاركه أما تاركه the واجب is what it is the one who deserves now it is better that the sheikh said يستحق he deserves أن يثاب the واجب is what the wajib is the one who deserves to be rewarded for the action that he does. He, re he He's rewarded. Huh? He deserves to be rewarded uh, for the action which he done. And he also deserves to be punished if he leaves his action. And the reason why we're adding the word deserves is because Allah wa ta'ala, it falls under his mashia. Some wajibat, the person may do it and Allah may not accept it. Or he may leave off this wajib and Allah may not punish him. Naam. والحرام ضده and haram is the opposite ضده means the opposite the opposite to the wajib that we mentioned so how is the opposite to it if you do it you deserve to be punished if you leave it you deserve to be rewarded نعم والمسنون الذي يثاب فاعله ولا يعاقب تارك تاركه تاركه the masnoon is what masnoon is the sunnah it's the recommended the one who does it he deserves to be, who does it? He deserves to be washed. He deserves to be rewarded. But if he leaves it, huh? he won't be punished for leaving it. Naam. Well, makruh didduhu. Makruh is the opposite to the mench, the opposite to the masnoon. It is disliked. That if the person who does it, the person who does it, huh? the one who does it, he doesn't get punished for doing it. But he does get rewarded. He deserves to be rewarded if he leaves it off. Naam. Al-Mabah Wal-Mubah Wal-Mubah Mustawid Tarafain Mubah The two sides are equal Meaning Doing it And staying away from it They're both the same Mustawid The Shaykh is saying Mustawa Mustawiyin Tarafaini The two sides are both what? They're leveled What sides? What two sides is he talking about? The doing on the leaving Both are the same If you want you can do If you want you can leave it You have the choice Naam It's your choice It's Mubah لذلك some of the scholars they said how can mubah be added to ahkam al-taklifi if it's not a how can mubah fall under ahkam al-taklifi when it's not even a matter which the sharia commands and we de we, we mention that in our al-waraqat we answer that question in al-waraqat naam the shaykh now is going back to the wajib the obligation wajib is what obligation obligatory mandatory now he's going to explain to us what is wajib. Oh, sorry, the types that wajib has. So we've taken wajib, we've taken haram, we've taken masnoon, we took makruh, we took mubah. How many, was, how many of that? They, those are the called, those five are called what? They are called ahkam al-shari'iyah al-taklifiyah. And that's just one type of ahkam al-shari'iyah. Ahkam al-shari'iyah is two types. Ahkam al-shari'iyah al-taklifiyah. The sheikh mentioned that. But there's another one which is called Ahkam al sharia al wadiyya The author didn't mention it. So if he didn't mention it, there's no point we should bring it to the students' attention. It might confuse them. So the Sheikh is now going to go back to wajib again. He's now going to go back to wajib and mention the types of wajib there are. Now, he's going to categorize them into two, but they are not only two. They are more than that. And they can be looked at from many angles. We explain it in details in Al-Waraqat. Naam. 
فرض عين فرض عين so the so now the sheikh look at it before he said wajib now he said فرض so according to the jumhur the فرض and the wajib are both the same according to the majority of the scholars they take that the فرض and the wajib are what they're the same the ahnaf they don't believe it the ahnaf believe uh, that the فرض and the wajib are not the same according to the jumhur of the ulama it's the same and they say that the fard and the wajib, the difference between it is the fard is what is taken from a a, a dalil which is qat'iyu <coughs> thubut. The fard is anything that is taken from a clear cut evidence. Whereas the wajib is anything that's taken from a dhaniyu ad-dalala. Naam. And they, all, they also have other, re, other, other differences that they do mention, but that's one. Naam. فعله من كل مكلف مكلف بالغ عاقل وهو جم وهو جمهور أحكام الشرعية الواجبة. The first time he called it فرض عين. فرض عين means the obligation is individual. فرض عين is called individual obligation. It means يطلب فعله the doing of this action is requested from what من كل من كل مكلف. Every single mukallaf, and I said I re already explained what the word mukallaf is. The mukallaf is a Muslim baliq aqil. Any person, so the Sheikh explained it to you. He's a mukallaf is a baliq aqil. He's a Muslim baliq on aqil. He's a Muslim who's reached age of puberty and he's got sanity. He, he has to come with this action. He has to come with this action. There's no excuse for him individually. Every single person has to come with it. And then the Sheikh said. وهو جمهور أحكام الشريعة الواجبة and the majority of the rulings in the the, the, the laws in the Sharia they are فرض عين the majority of the laws in the Sharia are what they are فرض عين um, the majority of it جمهور means the majority أحكام الشريعة the أحكام of the Sharia the majority of it are what uh, this type the فرض عين فرض عين means you have to do it specifically no one can take that responsibility for you. Dhuhr, you have to pray. You can't say, Akhi Muhammad, pray the salah for me. No. You can't say, Zaid, pray the salah for me. Not. No. Everyone has to pray for himself. Naam. Now the Sheikh is going to mention the second time. Hey? Naam. Wa ila fard al kifaya. The second time is fard kifaya. Again, you can see the Sheikh used the word fard instead of the word wajib. It shows that according to the Jumhur, the Fard and the Wajib are the same. Naam. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُطْلَبُ حُصُولُهُ وَتَحْصِيلُهُ مِنَ الْمُكَلَّفِينَ لَا مِنْ كُلِّ وَاحِدٍ بِعَيْنِهِ It is the type that for it to be brought is requested. وَهُوَ فَرْضُ كِفَايَةَ is وَهُوَ it is the one. الَّذِي يُطْلَبُ is requested. حُصُولُهُ its occurrence. It, for it to be for it to occur is requested from وتحصيل حصول and تحصيل are both the same meaning. Its occurrence for it to be present is requested from what? من المكلفين not from a مكلف. Pay attention. Not a مكلف. The Sheikh made a plural. From all those who are burdened as a whole. They all, somebody has to come with it. لا من كل واحد بعيني not a person in particular. لا not من كل not every واحد not every one بعينه individually not every person individually there has to be a group who do it the sheikh is now going to give us example هيا كتعلم العلوم like learning sciences نعم والصناعات النافعة والأذان learning um, manufacturing and and craft, which are beneficial for the ummah, is fardu kifaya. There has to be a people stand up for it. The adhan, it's a fardu kifaya. There has to be a people stand up for the adhan and do it. Not every single person has to do the adhan. Naam. Wal amri bil ma'roofi wal nahi anil munkar. Calling to the good and prohibiting the evil. There has to be a group of people. Because the ayah, what does it say? Wal takum minkum. Minkum. Let it be from amongst you. Ummatu yad'una ila al-khayri. A group who call to the good and prohibit the evil. So, al-amr ibn a'roof is what? Fardu kifaya. 
Basically, it means إِذَا قَامَ بِهِ بَعْضْ سَقَطَ عَنِ الْبَاقِينَ If a group stand up for it, it will be uplifted from the rest. نعم. وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكَ And وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكَ means what? And etc. And the likes of that. نعم. وَهَذِهِ الْأَحْكَامُ الْخَمْسَةُ تَتَفَاوَتُ تَفَاوَتًا تَفَاوَتًا كَثِيرًا بِحَسَبِ حَالِهَا وَمَرَاتِبِهَا وَآثَارِهَا The Sheikh said, these five, these five, what, are, what five is he talking about? الْوَاجِبْ وَهَذِهِ الْأَحْكَامُ الْخَمْسَةُ These five أَحْكَامُ الْخَمْسَةُ Which is الْوَاجِبْ الْحَرَامْ المسنون المكروه المباح Those five, those five. Don't think they're all the same. تتفاوت. It differs. تتفاوت. It differs. تفاوتا كثيرا. A big differences. It does. بحسب حالها in accordance to its situation. ومراتبها in accordance to its levels. وآثارها and in accordance to its effects. It differs. It is not على مرتبة واحدة. It is not of one level. So what does it do? It what? It differs. So to think that um, that the wajibat are the same for everybody, that's incorrect. To think that the sunnah is for everybody the same, no. The haram, no. The makru, no. The mubah, no. Prime is just one example, and you take the, uh, the, the rest as a qiyas. Khamar, khamar, for a person who's under duress, who's under a or he's un a, under a situation, not under a duress, but he's also under a situation where it's life and death. Hey, yeah? Does this haram change for him? Does it go low? Yes, the prohibition here is uplifted from him. Why? Because of his situation is changed. Are you with me? His situation is changed. The wajibat are not the same for the general mass or when it comes to the people of knowledge and the ulama. Like for example, if the haram is done by the scholar and a general mass do the haram, who are the first people who are going to be punished the day of judgment? Well, Allah said to the wives of the Prophet, You're not like the other women. You women, the Prophet's wives, you guys are not like the rest of the people. Don't think. Well, our Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, Allah wa ta'ala, when he spoke to him about the things that the Prophet, sallallahu uh, he did wrong, alayhi salatu wa Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he told him, if you did that and you followed them, you will never find a person who will give you victory, and etc, etc. Because of the fact that his status is high. So every time a status of a person goes up, the ahkam differs for them. Also situation, the rulings differ for people to people. Naam. فَمَا كَانَتْ مَصْلَحَتُهُ خَالِصَةً أَوْ رَاجِحَةً أَمَرَ بِهِ الشَّارِعُ أَمْرَ إِجَاءِ إجاب أو استحباب وما كانت مفسدته خالصة أو راجحة نحن عنه الشارع نهي تحريم أو كراهة أو كراهة. This sheikh now this is the sheikh what he's trying to say to you that these five they can change based on مصالح المفاسد they can change. فما كانت مصلحة now he's going to tell you the مصلحة has two types you have to underline these. Sheikh is already telling you. فَمَا كَانَتْ مَصْلَحَةُ Anything that it's maslaha. Maslaha means what? Anything that there is a good in it, a benefit in it. Which you, benefit for you as a person or benefit, benefit from the, for the sharia? Benefit for the sharia. فَمَا كَانَتْ مَصْلَحَةُ خَالِصَ It's maslaha is pure, meaning there is no mafsad in it. We say maslaha khalisa means what? A maslaha when there is a good that there's no harm in it whatsoever. That is like Tawheed, Ikhlas, Adil, Ihsan. All of those are. Jiha, uh, sorry, Tawheed is what? It is Maslaha Khalisa. Pay attention to this. Is there any harm inside Ikhlas? Never. It is uh, Tawheed and Ikhlas and Adil, justice, Ihsan, righteousness. Those are what? They are Maslaha Khalisa, pure Maslaha. The next one is called Maslaha Rajiha. The second one is rajihatun. It's the second type of maslaha. It's a maslaha which is rajiha. The maslaha is large now. It's not pure maslaha. There is harm in there. But the maslaha outweighs the mafsada, such as jihad. 
jihad is a maslaha is rajih, but there is mafsada. What's the maslaha that is rajih in there? The kalimatullah here, the Allah's words are going to go up. That's the biggest maslaha, because the sharia is going to gain that. Are you with me? The religion of Allah is going to prevail. That's a maslaha rajiha. But then the mother loses her husband, her, her son. The mother, she loses her son. The wife, she loses her husband. The child loses, loses his father. You see, the community loses its leader. All of that is a mafsada. Like in this mafsada is what? It's a very little mafsada. The maslaha is rajiha. You see? So the sheikh says, Amara bihi shari' amra ijabin wa istihbab. Based on whichever the maslaha is, the sharia requests the act, this to be done either in a forceful manner or a recommended manner. Pay attention to this. So the sheikh is trying to explain to you that the level of these five differ based on the masalih and the mafasid. Some matters the sharia will, will request for you to do it in a forceful manner. Why would it tell you to do it in a forceful manner? Because there is in it what? Maslaha rajih, uh, sorry, maslaha khalisa. Sometimes things will tell you to do it in a recommended manner. Because there is in it what? Maslaha rajih. And anything that its mafsada is ha look, its mafsada is what? The mafsada in it, the harm that is in it, is khalis. It's shirk. Kadib. Zulm. They're all what? They are maslaha which are mafsada which is khalisa. Pure mafsada. There's nothing else in there. Pure evil. Pure harm. Such as shirk. Lying. Oppressing. The next one is called mafsada, which is rajiha. The mafsada here is high. It's high. That is like drinking khamar. Isn't drinking khamar? Does it not have benefit? Allah said, يسألونك عن الخمر والميسر قل فيه ما إثم كبير ومنافع للناس. There is a manfa'a. Like Allah then says, وإثمهما أكبر من نفعهما. But the mafsada that is in it is higher than the manfa'a that you're looking at. Riba, is there a benefit in it? Yes, there is. People in this country, mortgage, you get a house, you live, you know, you don't have to pay rent. You set to yourself in. There's a mafsada. Naam. The mafsada, the mafsada here is not. It's rajiha than the maslaha you're talking about. There is a maslaha, no doubt. No one's going to say no. Like in the mafsada is rajiha. So the sharia orders you based on each one. The sharia requests for you to do what? It is nahiyu tahrimin or karahiyatin. Whichever of those fall, it falls under. Um, the Sheikh then said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Fahadha al Sorry. Naam. Fadl, you read it. Fahadha al Aslu yuhitu bi jami' al ma'murati wal manhiyat. The Sheikh said, based on that. Oh, based on that asad that he put in place, that fundamental principles that he put in place. Yuhitu, the person will encompass bi jami' al ma'murat, all of the orders that are given and all of the prohibitions that are given. The person will come to know it. An example for that is. Um, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said in the ayah, and Inna Allah ya'murukum, Inna Allah ya'muru ya ya bil'adil wal ihsani wa ita'i dil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaru. That ayah is a backbone. That ayah, it brought all of the usul of what? Ma'murat and all of the usul of the manhiyat. That ayah in Surah Al-Nahl, ayah 90. Naam. Wa amma al-mabahat. Wa amma al-mubahat. Wa amma al مباحات فإن الشارع أباحها وأذن فيها وقد يتوصل بها إلى الخير فتلح فتلحق بالمعمورات وإلى الشر فتلحق بالمنهيات. The Sheikh he said now he spoke about the he talked about the معمورات and he talked about the منهيات now he's moving on to the مباحات he said as for the مباحات فإن الشارع الشريعة the Prophet Allah تبارك وتعالى he permitted it he permitted it أباحها وأذن فيها and he gave permission to it now this here is just one type of مباح are you with me the مباح is two types a مباح which is what مأذون فيه the شريعة permitted it and it's the ones that the شريعة says that it uses the word ليس على الأعمى حرج ولا على الأعرج حرج ولا على المريض حرج The word حرج That there's no harm on the one who does this There is no burden on the one who does this 
You see, that is called the one that the Sharia permits. It's like you can, no problem. You're allowed to do that. There's no harm on you if you do this. That is called mubah, which is ma'zun. It's permitted for you. But there's another type of mubah, which is the one that the Sharia is silent about. It also falls under the mubah. So the Sheikh didn't mention that one, which is al maskutu anhu. The one that the Sharia is quiet about. There are anats a lot. The Sharia spoke about the Sharia. It did not speak a. It didn't speak about this issue, it's just quiet about it. And anything that the Sharia hasn't prohibited, the asal is what? It's at its mubah. So pay attention, why, what's the difference between these two brothers? Now what is the difference between these two? The difference between these two is the one that the Sharia permitted, no one can put in permitted. The one that the Sharia made permissible, no one is allowed to come and to prohibit it. Are you with me? But the one that the Sharia was silent about, a person can change that ruling. And he won't fall under. Such as the issue of the traffic lights. The issue of traffic lights. The issue of the traffic lights, it is from the mubah, which are maskut al-anhu fi sharia. The sharia never spoke about it. A person can come, if he sees a maslaha in it, he's allowed to say that there's traffic lights and people. Naam. So the shaykh, rahimahullah, he then said, فَإِنَّ الشَّارِعَ أَبَاحَهَا وَأَذِنَ فِيهَا وَقَدْ, يت... وقد يتوصلوا. وقد يتوصل بها إلى إلى الخير فتلحق بالمأمورات. Sometimes the mubah good will be reached by doing this mubah. So what does it become? It becomes obligatory for you to do it. وإلى الشر ها and it becomes what? Um, you might have to you by doing this mubah you go you fall into a haram based on it. So the Sheikh said, then it becomes prohibited. So sometimes the mubah in and within itself is what? It's permissible, but because there's khair that's going to be gained through it, it takes the command. And it takes the obligation. Or an evil will be fall, fallen into, and it becomes what? It becomes prohibited. Naam. فهذا الأصل كبير. أن الوسائل لها أحكام المقاصد. The Sheikh said, رحمه الله, this is a group. it is a foundation which is big. Which is what? أن الوسائل that the means لها it has أحكام المقاصد. It has the means has the rulings of the objectives. So this statement of the Sheikh saying that it is a what? It is a أصل which is big. We will say, Naam. Huwa aslun kabir. It is a big and a great fundamental point. Kama qala al muallifu rahimahullah. But for who? Walakin liman wada'ahu fi mahalihi. It is for the one who places it in its right place. And here are the clarification of it. So this asal, it's great for the person who places it and puts it in its right place. And so we have to understand these points. The first point that we have to understand is what is the meaning of wasail? What's the meaning of means? Um, means is it is the path which a person takes to a matter. It is a path that a person takes to a matter. And the Shaykh, inshallah ta'ala, he's going to bring some matters that are in more details as I don't want to jump too much uh, in it. But carrying on, um, there are sub-branches that come out from this qa'idah that we have to understand in order to take, put, put things in its right place. The first point, inshallah ta'ala, is, which is, the maqasid, the objective, so we understood what the wasail is. Now we have to understand the maqasid. The maqasid is the kitab and the sunnah. It's the knowledge of the kitab and the sunnah. Those are the objectives. Good. The wasail, the means to it, uh, to these maqasid, are, uh, for example, which we mentioned, fiqh, uh, usul al-fiqh, mustalah al-hadith, matters like that are wasila, there are means to get to it. If a person busies himself with it, he will understand it. But this qa'idah, the problem that occurs is that so many people think it's a qa'idah to mutarida. It's a qa'idah that applies every time, every place, unrestricted. As soon as this, 
they say to you, and I honestly did elaborate on it in my sharah of al qawaid al fiqhiyah when I spoke about what does wasail mean, what is a maqasid, and etc. But Ibn al Qayyim said a statement which is very strong in his book, Madariju Salikin. He said, لا يلزم ذلك. This qa'idah doesn't always necessitate, meaning that anna al-wasail la hakam al is not always like that. فقد يكون شيئا مباحا. Something might be mubah. بل واجبا or it might even be wajib but the means to it is disliked something might be mubah or it might even be wajib the objective is wajib or it's what? it is mubah pay attention something might be wajib or it might even be mubah the objective is mubah or wajib but the means to it is makru it's disliked so why, why didn't it take the same ruling? example <laughs> Example is al wafa'u bi ta'atil manzur. A person to fulfill, for a person to fulfill a, a, an obedient oath that he made. He made an oath which is good. Isn't that wajib? He, he made an oath on a good thing. That's wajib, right? But the, but the means is haram. The means is what? Um, the thing that he made the oath on. The thing he made the oath on is this like. And he gives many more other examples on that. Naam. Wa bihi na'lam anna ma la yatimu al-wajibu illa bihi fa huwa wajib. And based on that qa'idda anna al-wasail l'ahkam al-maqasid, we come to know these principles. They fall under this. All of those principles, they fall under the qa'idda anna al-wasail l'ahkam al-maqasid. These all fall under it. Pay attention. The first one is ma la yatimu al-wajibu illa bihi fawa wajib. Anything which is wa- in which the wajib cannot be done unless you have to do something, it becomes wajib. For example, for example, um, a person, his money reached uh, an amount, so the zakat is wajib on him. So, but he can't get the zakat money unless he goes to the bank. We'll say going to the bank is wajib. Going to the bank is wajib. Why? مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبُ Now, this قَاعِدَ مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبُ We have to realize, huh? مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبٌ we have to realize that the thing, the wasila that the person is being told to take has to be a wasila which he's able to do. And it's three types. It is it's divided into three types. A wasila in which a person hasn't got the ability to bring. He can't bring this wasila. He can't bring this means. If he tried hard, he can't even do it. Like for example, he can't bring the salah time to come. He can't take the sun and place it in its place for Dhuhr to come in, or Asr to come in, or Maghrib to come in, or Isha to come in. He's unable to do that. So this is a means that he can't come with, and this is not obligatory on him. And he doesn't have to come with it. And it's not wajib on him to come with it. The second type is, it is a type which he's able to come with, but he wasn't ordered to come with it. He wasn't ordered to come with it. This is also not obligatory for him to come with. This is not obligatory for him to come with and there's an ijma' that he doesn't have to come with those two are mentioned like in the third one is what the qa'idah is referring to which is that which falls under the person's ability and he was ordered to come with this he was ordered to come with it then he has to come with it such as the tahara for the salah are you with me also for the going to the try so a person he knows he can't go to the jum- jum- jum'ah unless he drives the driving becomes obligatory on him and all of that. That falls under the qa'ida. مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبْ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبْ نعم. وَمَا لَا يَتِمُ الْمَسْنُونَ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ مَسْنُونَ And anything that a sunnah can't be done without it, then it becomes a sunnah, the means itself. For example, praying Qiyamul Layl, using a clock. So praying Qiyamul Layl is a sunnah, mu'akkad, a highly recommended sunnah. Using the clock is a what? It's a highly recommended thing for you to do. Because the Qiyamul Layl is what? A highly recommended uh, thing. Now, 
فما يتوقف الحرام عليه فهو حرام. And anything that um, if you don't stay away from this, then you will fall into uh, it's the means for haram. Then it becomes haram. And that, for example, would be there is a, for example, Zaid min al nas, man called Zaid has two daughters. One of his daughters was breastfed with you, but you don't know which one it is. You're not allowed to go and marry one of his daughters because you don't know which one's breastfed. Falls under this قاعدة وما وما يتوقف الحرام إلا عليه فهو حرام وما يتوقف الحرام عليه فهو حرام. Because you don't know if you marry, even if it doesn't end up to be the one, even if it end, does not end up to be the one that was breastfed with you, it's haram because um, you you fallen into this. نعم. وسائل المكروه مكروها. And the means which are disliked are disliked. Again, it takes the same qaida, um, which is, for example, um, what would be like that? Like if a person he makes it a norm to always sleep at night and never pray qiyamul layl. This is disliked. This is a disliked. Also, the other thing that we'll, we can use for wa ma yatawakkafu haram alayhi fa haram. We can also use for it if a man is alone with a woman. For example, uh, staying with a woman alone, the khalwa, these are saddu dharai'ah, the doors, when the, the chapters which are, in which the doors are closed. Uh, we'll stop there for inshallah ta'ala today's session. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.